Praise the Lord. Thank God for this service once again. It's a blessing to be here. And for all of you that are watching, even at home, I thank God that you are there and that God is going to move to bless you and to minister to you. I keep saying this all the time and most of the time because I know that it means something for most of us to hear from the Lord himself. God has been moving lately with visions and dreams amongst us, especially among the ministers of the gospel. And these people have come out even to prophesy concerning what's happening around this time. And so as we gather together again on the Sabbath, although we are not together uh, at one place, we gather in the Holy Ghost, in the dwelling of the Lord. And with that, we begin to feel or perceive the mighty presence of God in our midst, which is what we needed all along and always. And I believe that's the reason why God has a people all over the world, dispersed in lands, in nations, in tribes and kindreds, people that we don't even know, or personally I don't, but those that the Lord has ordained for this time to bear his name. And such people in a forum like this or in this platform, I'm sure that some of them, we shall meet them. If not physically, then they'll hear the voice. And it's the voice that the Lord, our God, desires that all the people hear because we know him by his voice. And the Lord said in the book of John chapter 10 that my sheep know my voice. And when they hear that voice, they'll follow him and not follow a stranger. Praise God. And so I thank God that uh, right here we can do a service in spite of what's going on in the country and in the world. I want to share some oh, verses of scripture. I'm going to read them. And I want to preach a little bit this morning to those that are watching and see that God by this word actually bless you. I'm blessed by the feedback from many people across the land. Some who are calling or writing to us from Australia, from Kisi County, from Nairobi County, from Lamu County, and the regions around about. I feel so blessed and encouraged that people who are watching this service are beginning to see something, and they're beginning to rejoice that God gave them an opportunity which I think they would never have had if we were confined in one place where we normally do church. But we made a promise to everyone and anyone that need our fellowship, wheresoever they are, that we can come there. We can come to where you are. You can come and lay hands on the people, those who are sick, and heal them by the grace of God. We can come and minister this grace that God has given us. And truly, like we have done before, the Lord and his presence shall be powerful in our midst. I want to ask a question as we continue and see from what you think. You don't need to answer now because you may not, I may not hear what you are going to say. But the question is, and to which religion does God belong? Praise God. I'm asking that question because I, I'm asking myself too. Did he belong to any religion? Did Adam belong any religion? Did I, uh, uh, Elijah the prophet belong to any religion? Or Abraham? Or Isaiah or Jeremiah the prophet or Daniel or any other prophet did Jesus Christ himself belong to any religion what about the apostles who came after him those questions or that question is critical especially this time because we are living in a time when 
across the world we got about 4000 religions in this country alone they speak about 1500 or 2000 uh denominations maybe not religions and with that you wonder how and what the hell is all this is there something wrong with people or there is something wrong with the bible that we read so that out of the scriptures that we have or that we read many many denominations come out of them is there something that we don't know i'll try in a few moments today to give an answer to that question praise the name of jesus i'll try and put together a few verses of scripture see what paul said about the gospel that we preach see what jesus said about the gospel we preach and even moses the man of god we read in the bible that abraham found something and what i know about him is that he found faith and it was a faith which was once delivered unto the saints it was the only faith that we should have it was the only one that if all the people had across the world we would not have any religion or any denomination across the land praise the name of jesus and so uh, let me read from second chronicles chapter 15 And the spirit of God came upon Azariah the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. The Lord be with you while you be with him. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Praise God. Strong word in this one. And now for a long season in verse 3. The scripture says Israel has been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. Praise God. So if I start from the bottom we are living in a world today that say there is no need for the law of God actually the major denominations in the land content when you tell them about the law and the commandments of God and yet the bible says that if you say you know God and you keep not his commandments you are a liar and the truth is not in you so the scripture says israel had no teaching priest they didn't have the true god and they were without law lawless paul the apostle said without the law i would not have known what sin is and if god is going to judge the world because of transgressions and iniquity and sin the only basis he would have on the day of judgment is actually the truth that is in the scriptures praise the lord and so to say or to read that they were without the true god it means they didn't have the god of this bible because jesus said the word is truth and so they didn't have this word in their mouths they didn't even have it in their hearts and it was not abiding even in their mind it was a terrible time if i may say because to think that a nation of god had no god a people that were crowned with the glory of heaven a people that were chosen from the beginning of god to conquer lands to inherit promises 
to rule and reign with a mighty king of glory, the God of majesty, a people that were blessed in among the nations to think that they were without God. Well, it's actually incomprehensible, if not unfam- unfathomable. It is something that many people deny if they were told they were without God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But you see, we read in Amos chapter 8 verse 11 where God said, Behold, the day is come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of God. Praise the Lord. And I think that is what was happening to Israel at that time. It's not like God has left himself without a witness. The Bible says in all generations he has risen up early to send prophets to the people. His voice has never been void in the land. The Lord has never failed. He has never left his work of saving grace he has always stretched out his hand towards man for adventure he might be saved in fact the only problem with man is what jesus said man's ears have waxed gross and the heart has been blinded so that it cannot hear the word of god But the voice of the Lord has always been there and God would come in the night hours with his word and put it in the ear of a man giving him instructions about tomorrow about the next thing to do about the happenings of the moment and the only thing wrong was not God's voice or God's work It's always a man's fault. And so the Bible says that we are fallen short of the glory of God. Yes, men, praise the name of Jesus. And if that be the case, we see God the Father by his mercy sending his son Jesus Christ to come into this world. an adventure to to show himself to the people hallelujah to walk among them to live among them to minister to them with his grace and mercy and power by his very own voice so that man might be blessed and not just blessed but blessed abundantly with the life that was coming out of him flowing from within his heart his mind and his soul it was quite a great fellowship the bible says when they in their trouble did turn unto the lord god at of israel and sought him he was found of them praise the lord when they turned and sought him of course with the whole of their heart the whole of their mind the soul the bible says that he was found of them and what is it to be found of the lord praise the lord there are so many as varied doctrines as the number of men in this world that have expounded presence of God amongst the people there is only one way and is the only way that God would be with his people and that is when he has found a place within us and has established 
the throne of His grace right within our hearts. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that God is a spirit. And these are the words of Jesus Christ Himself. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. For that to happen, God must be found within us. Praise the Lord. It's different what people talk about, you know, as to where God is. Amen. If you would ask many people, they would tell you, somewhere above in heaven, God dwells. Amen. And with that, you don't know what they mean when they say God is with them. Praise God. We teach differently. The message of Paul was that it pleased the Father to reveal his Son in him. And he said when Christ was revealed in him, immediately he began to preach Christ and him crucified. Praise the Lord. He got a revelation that means something got into him which he didn't have before. And that's the reason he didn't know him. He was walking in darkness for so long. The reason he persecuted the church like most people would in this generation because they don't really know what it means to be with God. Amen? Oh, praise the name of Jesus. I find myself, I find uh, religions of this world or denominations as some kind of superstitions or houses of superstition. I read about Paul the Apostle, he said, God don't dwell in temples made with the hands of men. And the religion of man or religions of men are actually the temples made with the hands of men. If you read in the book of Acts chapter 17, you will see Paul walk into towns and villages and places where he was preaching the gospel until he came to Mars Hill at Athens. And he saw something that excited him somehow. He said he saw a writing, some inscription to the unknown God. He said, whom you ignorantly worship. And he told the people, people who were really devoted, you know, they were devoted to those uh, kind of worship. That God dwelt not in temples made with the hands of men. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And religions are temples made with the hands of men. Nothing more, not nothing less. What makes a man a Baptist or a charismatic or Pentecostal or a Catholic or a Jehovah, whatever it is, name them, is nothing but the works of a man. Amen. And man can do anything. You see, if they were or if they found themselves or himself in a situation like Israel was without the true God and without the teaching priests and without law, man is able to, to, to engrave for himself traditions and customs. The same that the Lord Jesus Christ found when he came and he told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, by your traditions, you make the word of God of none effect. And with those traditions and their customs, they actually rejected the grace of God and the Lord himself that had come for his people. Praise the name of Jesus. And people in this world, they can die for their religions. They can, they, they can defend that religion until 
they defend it with their own blood. That is superstitious. That is a devotion not unto God, but a devotion unto a graven image. Because for each religious organization, they have actually designed something or graven in their own mind what a Catholic should look like or a Baptist or a Lutheran or an Anglican, whatever it is, so that they don't see from the Bible what the image and the likeness and the stature of Christ means. Praise the Lord. Moses, the man of God, dissuaded Israel, telling them not to make graven images. Hallelujah. He told them when you came to Horeb, you had the voice of God alone. It was only a voice. There was no similitude of any kind. It was only a voice. He dissuaded them to make, from making graven images of any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or on earth below or anything that is a likeness of anything that is in the sea like the fish or even looking up the sky, anything that looks like the sun or the moon. He dissuaded them, telling them that when you came to Horeb, you had only the voice of the Lord. Amen. You know why you don't need an image? You don't need an image because the works of a man are vain. And God is a mighty God. You cannot reduce him into a piece of cake or a piece of wood whether it's a non-rotten wood or a piece of metal or whatever it is, you cannot reduce him into such. He is a mighty God. And his majesty reigns across nations, across time, across the world. His Bible says he is omnipresent, omnipotent. He, he, he is a mighty God. God and all nations of the earth are as a bucket unto him. If you ask Isaiah the prophet, so that you cannot make him look so small. Praise God. Or belittle him. That is shameful. If you are to carry a small image in your hand representing God, or on your neck, representing the Lord God Almighty in heaven, something that can't hear, can't talk, can't perceive, an image of wood or whatever it is, it is a disgrace, even to you, because when you pray, that God cannot hear you. See, I, I, would really, I desire a knowledge from the Lord far beyond what we got in this land today. You see, when, when the, 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 the man found out that God was not with him and there was no teaching priest, but not that he was not there, he just didn't want or he didn't know who it was because God's prophets are there, God's apostles are there, the voice of the Lord is still present even up to this moment. But you see, when man failed to hear or to know that voice, he made for himself preachers. Amen. Programmed. Because they have to go to schools of men. They have to be trained to be a Baptist preacher or a Pentecostal preacher or a Catholic preacher. It has to be, to be, to be molded in a certain way that seemeth right. Like the Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is death. It's got to be, they have to mold something to make up for the missing God with them and the missing priest. And then they also come up with their own constitutions. 
rules and regulations and laws even going against the scriptures of the bible you see if there is anything that has gone so wrong in this life religion and everything associated with it has become a disgrace in the sight of God praise the name of Jesus i would that in this world there was nothing religious praise god i would that in this world there was no superstition and witchcraft like we got today but because the word of god is true these things have to be there especially because the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god the bible says they are foolishness to him even what i'm saying right now because people wonder like why do you have to tell us about religions or about what we know is our way of life some religions are so old they date back many centuries and there are many people that have come to believe somehow that even the catholic church was the church left by the lord jesus christ which is false praise god when i read the bible peter james and john the apostles of jesus christ they had nothing nothing at all that we have of the doctrine of the catholic church they didn't have any graven images with them whether in the temple or on their necks or in their houses they didn't have such things praise the lord they didn't have the christmas holidays that we are given by the catholic church they didn't have the easter holidays and the easter bunnies and the easter eggs and the halloweens and all kind of religious holidays that we have today peter and john didn't have such they didn't have the trinity doctrine that we hear about across the land today they didn't have powerless summons these are people that have the power to heal the sick to cast out devils and even to raise the dead where is the power of god here people should admit that what we got is not what the prophets had what the apostles had what what jesus had when he was here upon this world and with that if we can only ask ourselves that question why the disconnect then perhaps we would come to this point or this knowledge that perhaps what we got is not what they had amen paul saw the devotion of israel at some point and he said i this saya amen they say they eat they they got knowledge and they got a lot of zeal but they didn't have the knowledge of god what knowledge they had was the knowledge and the wisdom of this world not of god exactly what we have in this world today what power they got is not the power from god but the power and the glory that only this world can give be it money or fame or following that to us when people see a lot of crowd following a man they kind of believe that that is a man to follow or the man is right 
what Jesus said concerning his gospel. That there are two ways. There is a way to glory and there is a way to eternal hell. And he said of the way to glory, that is a narrow road and few there be that find it. But concerning the broad way, he said, it is a broad way. And many, many find it. Praise the Lord. I won't want to be found on the broad way. I want to be found in the narrow way. If there is anything that I would ask you today, you that is watching or listening to this message, especially in this generation that we are in, there is a call of God, a voice that is ringing and sounding out so strong to all those that belong to God. Given that there are people in this world that will never be saved anyway. Amen. God is not going to save everyone then you would not have any need to preach or to send ministers to preach the gospel. The Bible says, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. And I know that God is not going to save everyone. Otherwise, we wouldn't have, he wouldn't have created hell and heaven. Praise the Lord. Because hell is for the disobedient. Heaven is for the obedient. Hell is supposed to be for the devil and his angels only. But you know what? The devil has children. And he will have them with him in hell. If there is anything God wants you and me to do today, is actually to come out. Not just from the world, because most people have come out of the world anyway. Amen. But when they came out of the world, like they came out of Egypt, they got into some religious houses or houses of superstition. They got into a wilderness of some point, of, of some place. Praise God. What is happening in the religious church system today is as what was happening in the wilderness after the people the children of Israel came out into the wilderness. They were murmurings. They were complaining. They were gluttonous. They were disobedient. They were making graven images. They were doing everything that was wrong against God so that God, instead of getting them to the promised land within 40 days, took them 40 good years to get to the promised land. Amen. So we find a people in the denominations that are crying day and night and praying, where is the Lord God? Where is God? Where is my help? Where is my redemption? Where is my healing? We got a lot of people that are praying day and night and nothing seems to happen because they have not moved into the promised land. Praise the Lord. They are, well, God is moving on them sometime and giving them the natural bread, maybe. And many people that have, abund- that have it in abundance confuse God's blessings with the natural bread. And because they eat so well at home, they, they begin to say, we are so blessed. And those who are not eating any meal in a day, the poor, the vagabond of society, they are told you are not the ones who are blessed. And the religious preachers use this favor on them, albeit some of them steal from the poor, to persuade people to fill up their churches, telling them that once you come here, you are going to be blessed and you are going to have food in the house and blah, blah, how clothes to wear and all sorts of things. Amen. But 
but that's not what amounts to God's blessing. David said, the blessed man is a man whose sins are covered. The man whose transgressions are forgiven. Say, blessed is that man. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And in the wilderness, the Bible says they died in the wilderness. They died disobedient people. God was there. God's voice was always there. Amen. And if you have that conviction inside you that indeed there is something I should be doing that I am not doing. Amen. That there is a life I should live that I am not living now. Don't sit pretty in that denomination where you are. Move. The Bible says, come out of her, my people. All these denominations and all these religious religions put together, in the eyes of God, they become a, a hallowed house, a hole, a Jezebel church system that God hates because God hates iniquity. And iniquity is handling the word of God deceitfully. Praise God. Iniquity is a natural man handling the scriptures, teaching from the Bible that is spiritual. That is iniquity of the highest order. Some people, because they have been to schools of religion or theological schools and have appropriated themselves the titles of a bishop or a pastor or a reverend or whatever they are or a doctor or a professor of theology they begin to think that they can handle the word of God with the natural mind of a man never Paul counted such all the knowledge he had all the education he had about religion as Nothing but dung. And we can make it worse and say, call it human dung. And if it's human dung, you don't want to look at it anymore once you come out of there. Paul fled from that religion that he had like a man f fleeing from his own dung. He didn't even want to, 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 to sense the smell of it. He didn't even want to come close to it like his feet was going to step there again. Never. He ran. And he actually said, no one should preach any other gospel other than that I preach. He knew why he said that. He knew where he came from. He knew what religion meant. He knew what the mind of a man can bring before a man. Because he had the mind of a man, a carnal mind, which, is, which the Bible says in a, is an enemy or enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And in fact for him, that carnal mind, that natural mind gave him rage, gave him anger against God's people so that he called them heretics. Praise the Lord. To the extent that he went about to seek letters of authority from the chief priests and from the government to persecute the church. Amen. And there is no persecution in the Bible where the chief priest and the government was not a part of. And Paul like many religious preachers of this world that are one with government, he used that position to persecute the church. When Jesus came, he stood with God. He was a savior of mankind. He was not going to take position like to belong to some sect or some religion. The Pharisees wanted him to be a part of the, them. 
the Sadducees likewise. And when he rejected all that, they cried, crucify him, crucify him. And they killed him. Just to safeguard their own religion. In fact, they said, this man is worthy of death because he said he is a son of God. He claims to be a son of God. But is in that what all that God requires of us? That we are born again, born again of the pure and corruptible word of God. Born again, born of water and of the Spirit. That is what God requires of us. <coughs> Praise the Lord. <coughs> that is exactly what the Bible, the scriptures require of us. And that is what the Lord himself requires of each and every one that is hearing even this message today. Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born again. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And then he said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. What do religious preachers do today? Some of them even tell you, all you need to do to be saved is to raise up your hands and accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. No such thing in the Bible. Praise God. No such thing in the Bible. Jesus said, repent. Paul said, repent. John the Baptist said, repent. Peter said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So for those who have been baptized, have you been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins? Not many have because not many preachers know what the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is. Praise God. I'll be teaching that in another sermon about the true baptism. Praise the Lord. But I want you to know that the religion that you so honestly hold on to is nothing but superstitious. I call them rags, filthy rags in the eyes of God. Because God wants to pick you up and put you in his bosom. Pick you up and put you in Christ Jesus. And once you are in Christ Jesus, the Bible even says in Christ there is no Greek, there is no barbarian, there is no Jew. I mean, we, would, we could say there is no Catholic, there is no Baptist, there is no Pentecostal or Chrismatic or whatever it is. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, the Bible says there is no male or female. We all become sons of God because we are born of one spirit, one, one doctrine, and one baptism. And so, we are of one Lord, one God, which is the true God who is the Father of us all. The only way humanity can come together to be of the same mind and soul and spirit and body is if they believe the truth of the Bible, this word of God, and the message of Jesus Christ of being born again. John cried and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. No religion takes away sin. Only the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the one that takes away sin. So if you were to fight for something, fight for the blood of Jesus. Plead for the blood of Jesus Christ. Because that alone is the answer to every transgression, every sin, every iniquity, every sickness, and every disease is the answer to the troubles that we have in the land today. Even to the famines and the wars and the tribulations and the pestilences and all these things that we see in our generation. The blood of Jesus Christ 
once sprinkled upon us will deliver us from all things that are happening and the things that are happening is what I, I call the wrath of God praise the name of Jesus and the Lord says I'm going to deliver you from the wrath of God amen praise the Lord if you can do anything today plead the blood of Jesus Christ forget your religion lay aside any doctrine that you have seek only that the Lord has commanded you in the Bible because the Bible says the whole duty of man is to love God and to keep his commandments to God be the glory in Jesus name Amen God bless you Praise the Lord beginning immediately we are going to have our services on YouTube at Christian Outreach Ministries INC I want to welcome you to those services if you happen to find that link please subscribe and you are going to get so many of our messages including some messages that we have done before and God is going to bless you Amen